To make a self-portrait based on the art of Amadeo Modigliani, the first thing we need to do is create some reference points for to create our proportions, to keep our proportions accurate. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to fold our paper a few times. The first fold we're going to make is this way, the long way. We're going to match up our corners and make a fold this way. The entire length of the paper. Then we're going to do the same thing this way in the opposite direction. We're going to match up our corners and fold the whole thing this way. So we have a fold this way, we have a fold this way. Now we're going to make a fold starting from the bottom of the edge of the paper. We're going to pull it up to the middle fold, match it up with the middle fold, and make another fold. So our paper looks like this. We're going to do the same thing with the top. Top edge to the middle. Make a little crease there and then complete the fold. So now our paper is broken up into eight areas. And we're going to be using these folds as reference marks so we'll know where to put certain things on our portrait as we go. These folds won't show so much once you get your drawing all finished and colored. You really won't see these very much. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to determine where the top of the head is going to be. I'm going to put some little X's where the folds are, just so you can see them better. I don't know how well you can see those. I've got a little X there, X there, and an X there to show where the, where the folds meet. Okay, so right above this fold right here, we're going to go about halfway between that fold and the top of the paper, and we're going to make a little mark there. And now we're going to come down to about almost halfway below. This is the middle of the paper. This is the, the main middle fold of the paper. You're going to come down below that a little bit, almost halfway, and make another mark. Like that. Okay. So now that you have these two marks, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is make the basic shape of the head. We know about how long it's going to be now, but now we have to decide about how wide it's going to be. So, we're going to come out about this far. Make a little mark. It's not quite halfway between this fold and the edge. It's close to halfway, but not quite there. We don't want it to be too, the face to be too wide. So we'll come and make a mark there, almost halfway across. We'll do the same thing on this side. Almost halfway across, we'll make a mark. Now what we're going to do is from the end of this little mark, we're going to make a curve that goes right to that little mark we made before. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Now the top of the head is wider than the bottom where the chin goes. So on this part, we're going to come out a little, we're going to make our, our mark a little wider before we begin. And then we're going to curve it down like this. And the whole thing ends up looking like a, like a long egg. So it's a little more narrow at the bottom than the top. So we have this shape that's roughly the size of our head that we're drawing. Now, <clears throat> we are going to find 
the middle between this little X here and the edge of our face. And we're going to make a little mark right here and right here. It's about the middle between this little mark and the edge. This is the center fold. So between the center fold and the edge, we need to find roughly the middle. Okay, so we'll make a little mark. And it's pretty much right on the fold. Now right below that fold, we are going to draw, right on that line, right in the center of that line, we're going to draw a circle. On each side, about that size. And now around each circle, let's start with a curve on top on this side and a curve on, to on top on this side to start the shape of the eye. Put a curve on top there and a curve on top there. Then we'll do a curve on the bottom. You know, I'm going to go ahead and erase these little lines on top of the eye because we don't need those anymore. We really don't need that little mark in the middle anymore either. So now we're going to establish kind of where the eyebrows are going to be. And we're going to do that by just making a curved line about this, just above the eye, about the same direction as the shape of the eye, like that. And like that on both sides. Now we're going to make our elongated nose. Because in Modigliani portraits, the nose is always longer than in real life. So we're going to start at the end of this eyebrow. We're not going to go to the center line. We're going to start just shy of it. We're going to start with just a little ways out from that center line. And we're going to make a line that goes down. It flares out just a little bit. <clears throat> and stop it about there. It's past. If you look at this fold and this fold, it's past the half. This is about halfway and it's past that a little bit. So we're going to come down a little, about that far and then make a curve that goes over like that. Once we have that curve, we're going to make a little curve on the side here or the nostril. I'm not really going to bother to draw the nostril on this side because we get the impression that this is a nose. This is kind of an abstract self-portrait, so it's not... <clears throat> We're not looking for anatomical accuracy, just a suggestion of a nose. Now, if you think your nose is bigger or smaller than this example, then you'll want to adjust. The same goes with your eyes. If you think your eyes should be bigger or smaller or maybe closer together or farther apart, you can always erase and adjust that. This is just giving you the basics of the face and where things generally belong. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is just above this fold right here, we're gonna make ourselves a line. Where the mouth, make ourselves a mouth line about that wide. That's how wide I'm making mine. Yours could be a little smaller or a little wider. It's all a matter of personal preference. Now, above that line, right in the middle on the fold, we're going to make a little U right there. And from the edge of that U, we're going to connect it to the edge of the mouth on both sides. And this will make the top of the lip. I'm going to erase this little X down here that I made so we can draw the bottom lip. The bottom lip, it's going to start just a little bit in from the corner of the mouth. It's, it doesn't meet up right with the corner. Make a little mark there and a little mark there and then just make a curve. 
Okay. And you can make your mouth more smiley than mine. I just have like a straight, you could, you could fix the curve and make it more smiley. If you want your portrait to be more smiley, you could even have your mouth open and show teeth. Maybe this is the open mouth and you could see the teeth and you could draw an extra lip down here. You can use this for the open mouth space. But I'm just going to leave, on this example, I'm just going to leave the mouth closed and kind of normal looking. <clears throat> okay. For the next part, let's draw the neck. So we're going to imagine that there's a visible line going from the corner of the mouth to the bottom of the face here. We're going to make a little mark on each side. And we're going to make a curved line that goes down to this fold. Starts here and goes down to that fold. It's our long Modigliani style neck. You can even make it a little longer if you want to, or a little thinner. Maybe I'll go in a little thinner on this because it seems like it's a little too thick for a Modigliani style neck. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're going to make a curve starting here and going across here so we can make where the shirt is going to be, the opening of the shirt. Now from, from this corner here, we're going to come outward and downward at the same time and make a shoulder. I'm going to come out and down at the same time. It's just kind of like making a curve for the shoulder. So we sell the little X there. <clears throat> so now we have a pretty good structure for a portrait so far. We've got a lot of our main features. If your ears are going to be showing in your portrait, they always start about the same level as the eye. The top of the ear is about the same level as the top of the eye. So you're just going to make a thing that looks kind of like this. It looks like a looks like a teacup handle. It curves up and then down like that. Now everybody's got different ears, so if you think your ears are a different looking shape, you could change it. Sometimes you can see bits of information inside the ear, like a, like a, like an S shape inside the ear, like a backwards S on one side and then an S shape on the other side. Your ears might not show, but depending on what kind of hair you have, how your hair is styled. But you could have them showing if, obviously, if your ears do. Okay. Now comes the part with the hair. The first thing we have to do is, is determine the shape of your hairline. And the best way to do that is to get a look at yourself. You can take a picture with your tablet and take a look at the shape of the, the hairline. You can look in a mirror and get a sense of that. So I'm going to make this hairline just come down a little bit like this. We'll say the hair is parted in the middle. So I'm going to put a little bit of a V here for the hairline. I'm going to erase this bit of stuff I don't need anymore. The hair always sits on top of the head, higher than the head itself. So you wouldn't just draw a bunch of hairs on this line. You want to create a hairline on top of the head. So I'm going to make another little V. I'm going to draw some hair and I'm gonna make this portrait into a girl so I'm gonna make the hair longer on both sides and I'm gonna have some hair coming down here some extra little flip of hair coming down here now I'm not 
making a self-portrait here for my example. This is just a portrait. I don't look anything like this. But you want yours to look like you as much as possible. I can make a few extra lines for the hair. You can make a line coming in. A lot of times hair comes in a little bit on your forehead. Goes behind the ear or over the ear. Let's just say that her hair is covering up her ear on this side. We'll just have the one side showing. We'll make that just come all the way down. I'm thinking, I think her chin is a little bit too severe for a girl, so I'm going to actually change it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring it in and make it a little bit more pointy and a little less large. She had a big jaw for a girl, so I'm going to switch it around a little bit. That looks a little more reasonable to me. And you should always like do this when you're drawing. You make judgments, you erase, you change things until they suit you, until and until it matches your vision for what you wanted to do. Can put a few extra hairlines. Okay. So now, before you color, actually, let's talk about design on the shirt. Let's put a design on the shirt of some kind, just to give it some more interest. I'm just going to put a heart with some marks all the way around it like that. Now, before you start coloring, if you have a Sharpie or you have a dark colored pencil, something that you can make a dark mark with, this is a good time to do that. I'm going to speed up the video while I do this over the whole drawing. Okay, so I got everything bold and bolden in a Modigliani painting. Oftentimes he would have his lines very bold in the painting, so you could really see them. So that's what we're doing here as much as possible. You want to make your lines as dark as you can on your drawing. Sharpie is the quickest way to do that, the best way to make them dark before you go to color. When you go to color, here's an example of a boy in the teacher. This example is actually in the lesson materials. I made my background two different colors. I want you to do the same. But I did more than that. I created textural interest like, like the, the brush strokes used in a Modigliani painting by using more than one color. I gave it a background of red on this side and then I went in with some purple and added some texture. On this side I started with a light green and went in with a dark green and created some texture. When I did the skin tones on this, I started with a like a very lightly going over it with orange colored pencil and then I went in with a, in different places with going a little harder with the color the orange colored pencil, a little bit of red here and there, a little bit of light brown. I created kind of a modeled skin tone texture because it makes it more interesting and it also makes it more real. He's less flat because he has this, this color texture happening. And I want you to do that with your skin texture. Even if you have very dark skin, nobody's just one skin color. Everybody has lots of colors in their skin. And if you really look, you'll be able to see it, especially with lighter skin people you have a lot of colors happening in your skin. Okay? With darker skin people, it's still just as true. It might not be as obvious, but you, you will find other colors and like reds and blending warmer colors into the, into the darker brown color, if that's what you're using. Okay? 
So make this project all full color. Get some texture into your colors by blending colors together. Use your color pencils creatively. I've got a lot of colors happening in the skin. I want your skin to have a lot of different colors happening in it too. And I hope you enjoy making this portrait. And I will see you next time.